Hello, all you lovely people. Jules here for WhatCulture.com, and I want to talk to you today about video game bosses, or more specifically, how to beat such big daddies in ways that you might not even have thought of. The video game boss is meant to, on paper at least, serve as a barrier to player progress that requires skill to overcome. It's meant to take what you've learnt or just push you to a button bashing frenzy in order to beat it. It's meant to, at least. Yet, because we're just such feisty little scamps with a penchant for pushing bounds, we've found ways of pulverizing these powerhouses with interesting and devious ways. Some are comedic, some are stupid, but nonetheless, let's have a good old list, shall we? I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 genius ways to beat video game bosses you totally missed. And speaking of things you totally might have missed, I've got a line of merch out there, and it would mean the world to me if you went out and checked it out on shop.whatculture.com. I bet you'll look grand. Anyway, number 10, Carly Demos, The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. We begin with a secret way to beat this ferocious fauna that took 14 years to be discovered. That's pretty impressive seeing as gamers will try anything to beat bosses in this day and age. I mean, hell, a rabbit has beaten the cleric beast. The usual way to wilt this demonic plant is to send Link's boomerang flinging at its ceiling clinging tentacles, followed by the typical tactic of flailing your sword wildly at the flower exposed within. But there is a much, much easier way to best this beast. Because plants, you know, they love to drink up water, but you know what, too much, it kills them. God, that's sad, isn't it? Especially if it has magical purifying properties. A solitary drop of the mystical forest water is enough to make Calais Demos look like a dong and die in seconds. I mean, what does this say about gamers that it took so long to think about watering a plant? I mean, they're probably too busy trying to give each other the finger to realise how to develop a green thumb. But there we go. Number 9. The End Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater Now, we all know that The End is a brilliant boss battle. If you so choose to face him, and we all know that there's a super sneaky way to wait out the clock and simply let him die of old age. But another method to take down the man who looks as old as I feel when I see kids dabbing and doing the floss dance is just by being a better sneak shot snake sniper than him and shooting him immediately after a cutscene ends early in the game. If you're quick enough, the player can shoot the Cobra's father of sniping dead as he's being wheeled back inside of a building. He'll explode in a shower of camouflage and cog springs and you'll feel about as smug as you can when you realise you've shot an unarmed, infirm man. But it dissipates even further, very, very quickly, in fact, when you realise that a whole elite ocelot unit will instead take his place in the forest later on. So yeah, you can do it, but maybe it's not the best way of doing it. And I suppose it's not really thinking outside the box either, as it's just, you know, shooting a man in the face. But it's still pretty fun. And you know what? You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Number 8. Every Undead Enemy Ever Final Fantasy It's a long-established trope of Final Fantasy that enemies of the rotting corpse category can be healed to death with curative spells and items. This applies to absolutely all of them. Fake zombie presidents, cave-bound tribal spirits, moogle-munching octopi, the whole festering lot. It even extends to trains. That's right undead trains. Now, Cyan's Nightmare from Final Fantasy VI is one of the game's standout moments. A soul-searching journey through a phantom landscape as the former soldier contends with the guilt over the death of his wife and son. Naturally, the stirring sequence concludes with the party desperately fleeing a demonic train which has, metaphorically at least, gone off the rails. Entertaining as it might be to get another of your party to bloody suplex the evil locomotive, the whole battle can be skipped entirely with a solitary phoenix down, which is entirely brilliant, and you know what, I'm just so happy that it's an in-joke that seems to have picked up steam along the way. Number 7. All of the Bosses – Deus Ex Video games condition us to believe that whenever we suddenly find ourselves trapped in a room with a nefarious foe making for our face with some kind of nasty, pointy, shooty thing, it's necessary to stand our ground and batter them to death. It's you or them, and one of you is going down and will be torn to shreds just like your mum on sexual bingo nights. There's my one. Her list. In short, though, cowardice isn't an option. Yet that's only because we've been conditioned to think that it can't be an option. The original Deus Ex was famed for gifting players with an array of solutions to their problems, and running away from combat was just as valid as engaging in a bloodbath. This even worked for the bosses. For example, say that you couldn't talk your way out of a scrap or were just about as puny as Rich Hudson? Well, you know what? Just try running past them. Seriously, much like my personal debts, you can literally solve all your problems by running away. Brilliant! Number 6. Dragon, Super Metroid. 
Super Metroid really is the bee's bollocks, a fact that's highlighted by the super smart beyond-the-box alternate solution to killing resident bastard Dragon deep in the heart of Meridia. This crustacean terror can be a complete trial, floating about his claustrophobic chamber erratically, all the while supported by a quartet of evil cannons constantly shooting at Samus and her 80s power shoulder jacketed form. But these cannons are actually the key to this sneaky shortcut. If Samus destroys them, she can subsequently latch her grappling beam on to the sparking wreckage whilst in the grip of Dragon's talons and her power suit acts as a conduit, electrocuting the crabby rotter and killing it in a single hit. Well, I can honestly say that when I first discovered this, I, much like that fatty fathom dweller, was utterly shot. Puns. <laughs> I've got them! <laughs> Number 5. Azul Magia Final Fantasy V Now, Spanish-speaking players got the immediate upper hand with this potentially tricky customer at the tail end of the criminally underrated Final Fantasy V. Azul Magia is encountered in the Dimension Castle's dungeons, and if you so happen to speak the language, you'll realize that this translates as Blue Mage. Hmm, I wonder if that's a hint. As we all know from our countless D&D sessions, Harry Potter schooling, and countless personal research into resurrecting dead pets, Blue Mages in Final Fantasy learn any spell that's cast upon them. So instead of enduring an arduous battle against the villain from the void, simply hit him with a round of the self-destruct spell. In either a fit of excitement or just sheer stupidity, he'll promptly use his new trick back on you and it does exactly what it says on the tin, blowing him up in an instant. What an idiot! Number 4. Metal Man Mega Man 2 Oh, Metal Man, you silly sausage wrapped in egg on your face. You really are a slice of wet bread, aren't you? Now, Dr. Wily may be a maniacal genius, but there's an inherent flaw in each of his robot masters in that they all leave their weapons behind after ascending to silicon heaven. Metal Man is no different. After our eponymous hero turns him to rust, he drops his supremely powerful metal blade. Pretty sweet, right? Well, much in the same way that Achilles crumbled when somebody taps his heel, or when Josh collapses under the weight of his own hair without hairspray, you now have the ability to undo Metal Man in a swift, simple move. Using his own weapon, you can cut his life into pieces with a soul retort, one shot, no bleeding, Josh's hairline is receding. Anyway, I don't know why I went off on that joke there, but yeah, it's a one hit with his own weapon and it just ends him. What an absolute goof. Number 3. Guardian Sonic and Knuckles This desert-dwelling golem has one thing going for it. Unlike most of Eggman's inventions, a sturdy six shots from our spiky speedster won't be enough to send him packing. In fact, Sonic can't even hurt the damn thing. What you're supposed to do is just bop the lumbering lunk on the bonds repeatedly until he falls back into the quicksand that is behind it. If that sounds like too much of a faff about, you can just simply hang out in the sand yourself and wait for the silly Guardian to jump over you and see himself off exit stage right. Now, I'm not going to have a go at the Guardian too much. After all, he's literally just a lump of rocks with a semblance of sentience, but at this point it's less a feeling of beating a beast and more well, assisted suicide. Number 2. Bazaar Paper Mario 64 Now, this one is so easily done that it's also so easy to miss and can be brought about by simply telling a bare-faced lie. So, Paper Mario, aside from being another shining gem in the Nintendo 64 crown and being an absolute joy to play, has many moments where you've got to take off the happy cappy and stomp some people's head in. One of which can be this big buzzard buzzard, who you end up fighting 9 times out of 10 when you encounter it because of a simple question that he asks. He asks, who are you? Because Bazaar is a little bit unfamiliar with the Crown Prince of Plumbing and only vaguely knows about Mario, you can actually just fib and tell him that you're actually Luigi, to which Bazaar will just shrug you off like the second best brother that you apparently are. It's so funny because when polling my friends, they all said that they answered that they were Mario, but not me. It was content to lie about things then, as I am now. And number one, The Master, Fallout. The original Fallout's final baddie, The Master, is not what you'd call a looker, more of the face for radio, more a twisted mess of flayed skin and fried machinery who looks like he was a dog chew in a former life. A real Scott Tailford situation going on with his face, I can tell you that. Sorry, I, that was a bit graphic, that last one there. But anyway, the master, aside from looking like a chicken nugget that took a kick in, is also a pretty tough opponent to put down. So why not just be better? 
better than all this violence and put him down with a smile. And by that, I mean that you can charm the master with your silver tongue and convince this Nutella spread head to kill himself. All you have to do is make him realize that, because they can't possibly reproduce, his plans for the mutant race are entirely futile. Utterly crestfallen, the leader calls the nukes in on himself, and, you know, I I, I would normally feel sorry for the chap, but he's he's clearly not thought through his plan very well, if that's, if that's what's going to take it to undo it. You know what I mean? Rule number one, mutants. You want to build them? Yes. Can they reproduce and sustain themselves? No. Well, that's the end of that plan then. Get back in the bin. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a bit too hard. Anyway, that was our list. I hope you enjoyed that. It was a little fun rump, wasn't it? You have been amazing for sitting through and listening this far. And if you would, please go to shop.whatculture.com and check out the line of t-shirts that I have released up there. That would be fan bloody tastic. I don't know why we did that voice there. You can also go follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. And as always, I have been Jules. You have been awesome. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.